Fellas, we're jumping straight into builds today because pretty much all the sandbox patch notes have been disclosed to us. We're entering the final week before the Witch Queen actually launches. With that being said though, guys, day one, you're gonna wanna have a good build, primarily for the legendary campaign, which we know will be a much tougher campaign, but well worth the time invested as you will be 1520 power upon completing that campaign. So guys, I'm gonna go over a number of builds that are gonna be even nastier in the upcoming sandbox. Now, before we actually get into these builds, let me just do a quick recap of some of the big major changes coming to weapons. First up, exotic primaries are actually going to be getting a 40% damage buff against minor enemies. This includes both bullet damage and explosion and effect damage. So things like sunshot, malfeasance explosions, etc. Now, exotic trace rifles are also going to be getting a 40% buff. And to make things even nastier, pulse rifles are getting an individual buff on top of that 40% by 10% against minor enemies. Now, with all that being said, let's dive into the builds. First up, Thorn and Necronic Grip. Guys, we saw the synergy for the first time last year, or actually the year before last, when Beyond Light actually launched. And it was a synergy between Soul Devour, which is on Thorn, and Grasp of the Devour, which is on Necronic Grips. But what should have been an exotic that only applied to the melee was actually able to synergize perfectly here with Thorn. And considering that Thorn is also gonna be getting the 40% buff there with the rest of our exotic primary, this poison synergy is only going to get nastier. Now, another build to consider with the pre order bonus for the Witch Queen, you also gain access to the new SMG Osteo Striga. Now, this is kind of a similar situation as like No Time to Explain was with Beyond Light. Osteo Striga, though, will be a craftable exotic next season with weapon crafting, and I'm assuming we'll gain the weapon pattern throughout the campaign. But as you can see, it performs very similar to Thorn, uses the same poison effects. It just is an SMG and not a hand it. The question that comes up, will this also synergize in the same way as Thorn does with Necrotic Grips? I would assume so. And again, this is purely speculation here, but it would make sense that over time Bungie is giving us more synergy in regards to this poison based subclass, which would lead us perfectly into the next big annual expansion after all the Void 3.0 subclass updates roll out. Either way it goes, both Osseo Striga and Thorn are looking to be very nasty with necrotic grips in the next sandbox. Moving on, our next build is actually Agar Scepter. Now, I bring up Agar Scepter because it too was included in the 40% buff, as it is a trace rifle, but it's also getting a slight buff. Essentially, stated in the TWAB a few weeks ago, they rebuilt the perk. Now, they went into it and they said that it used to modify supercharge rates. Now, it freezes the super recharge and deducts super directly, fixing several issues with activities that change charge rate and outliers for recharge based on the intellect stat and that the super should now drain more slowly while empowered. But what it really boils down to is that first notation where they said that it actually had a very weird effect in activities that also had scalers. So they rebuilt it to turn off regeneration while active and have implemented a slower drain using a different method. But this is one of those situations like I'm still trying to wrap my head around it because there are ways in which you can maintain super regeneration while using Agri Scepter. Whisper of Bonds is one of them. Mantle of Battle Harmony is another one. Essentially, takedowns with weapons that have a damage type matching your subclass element will grant you super energy. You can quite literally use Mantle, Whisper of Bonds with Agar Scepter and the Exotic Catalyst, which by the way, the Exotic Catalyst actually increases your damage by 80% on crits. That in combination with the 40% buff that's coming, I guess the question that comes up is how does this going to work with Mantle and Whisper of Bonds? Will it work at all? Despite them saying right there that they've rebuilt it to turn off regeneration. So it sounds like it won't. Do I still think it's going to be good? Well, it depends on the super drain, right? Like if they ended up slowing it down and making it last like two, three times longer, then obviously this is a ginormous buff. And Mano Battle Harmony with Absorption Cells still gives you a damage buff. So a 40% buff, an 80% buff from the Exotic Catalyst with a 20% damage buff from Mano Battle Harmony. You could see the potential here, fellas. It's looking nasty. Now, the next build I want us to consider is Chromatic Fire with a lot of weapons, like a ton. Everything here is going to be good with Chromatic Fire. Hawk Moon, a of spades, no time to explain, outbreak perfected. Any weapon that emphasizes precision kills in combination with the explosion effects from chromatic fire, which by the way, should transfer into the 40% increase in damage. Again, this is not just applying to the bullet damage, but also the explosion effects 
effect damage. So for instance, Outbreak Perfected. It's a kinetic pulse rifle, which synergizes perfectly well with chromatic fire, creates SIVA nanite swarms on rapid hits and precision kills. Those SIVA nanites should actually do increased damage based on that 40%. And also because it falls underneath that blanket of area effect damage. And of course, the explosion damage from chromatic fire itself. The question we have about chromatic fire going into Void 3.0, considering you can rock a Void subclass and get those Void explosions, would those Void explosive kills synergize at all with our Void subclass fragments or even our aspects? We don't know. We don't know all the fragments, but I like to play the game of what if when talking about these builds. What if those Void explosions could cause surrounding enemies to become volatile? Huh? And then when you got things like Ace of Spades, which already has Firefly, well then you got explosions on explosions. Essentially double the explosion. All around the board, Chromatic Fire looking pretty nasty with a number of exotic primary weapons that are all getting buffed. Now since we brought up a lot of pulse rifles, we have to talk about Bad Juju. Now Bad Juju, another kinetic pulse rifle that many people don't even care about. But String of Curses, alongside the Exotic Catalyst, is one of the best ways to grant super energy for your character. And considering that pulse rifles in combination with the exotic primary buff that's coming is a whopping 54% increase there in damage, multiplicatively, and String of Curses also gives you bonus damage, plus that super energy, this is going to be one of the best ways to regen your super over and over again. The exotic that I want to pair with it, we're considering that Void 3.0 is right around the corner. I thought the Manigly Skull of Dire Hamkara would actually be a good one. Now I know it's nowhere near as potent as it used to be, but actual grandeur does provide damage resistance while casting your Nova Bomb, and also the Nova Bomb kills himself, grants you super energy. This feeding back into Bad Juju, Bad Juju giving you more super with that increase in damage and String of Curses. You can see the cycle right here, guys. This is an old build, but still a very good build. Now another exotic that's going to be interesting is No Time to Explain. Another exotic primary weapon, but a little different, right? As No Time to Explain comes with the trait Time Slip, essentially allowing for a small portal to open, shooting bullets from an alternate timeline version of the weapons. And that precision hits actually extends that portal's duration. And if you get the exotic catalyst, your little projectile buddy there can actually shoot more frequently. Now, the reason why we bring up No Time to Explain was because last week it was confirmed from Bungie in the DCP podcast that you will be able to stack all these little buddies, Arc So, Void So, and even a No Time to Explain projectile buddy there, which by the way, should also be getting an increase in its damage on top of the 40% stacked with 10% more damage to pulse rivals. So if all of that transfers over to our portal buddy, now you just have to ask yourself, how often can I throw down a rift on Void 3.0? Guys, there's going to be a new aspect called Child of the Old Gods, where when you cast your rift, you summon a Void Soul. Now this Void Soul actually will go out and launch itself toward enemies. It'll detonate, it'll drain and deal damage and weaken the targets. And during the same process, it'll be restoring your melee and grenade energy, depending on the type of rift you're running. And to Defeating the enemy who is being drained will also grant you rift energy. All of this is taking place while no time to explain and your little portal buddy is going ham with increased damage. So a couple of exotics I'm going to bring up that I'm looking at to constantly be throwing down tons of rifts is of course Eye of Another World, which really drops down the regeneration speed of all your neutral game abilities. Your grenades, your melees, your rift abilities. I really like Eye of Another World, especially in in-game content. You've also got Vesper of Radius, which allows your rift to recharge faster when you're surrounded by enemies. And I know someone's going to bring up Sanguine Alchemy. I think Sanguine is still going to be good. The issue with Sanguine is that it appears that the Child of the Old Gods only procs one Void Soul per Rift being cast. So really, the objective here needs to just be constantly casting those Rifts, right? In combination with various mods too. Perpetuation, which can lower the cooldown of your class ability. Stack it with Distribution. And if you happen to be generating some orbs, you can take advantage of Insulation. There is a number of ways here to perfect this build. And hell, if you didn't want to do that, you can just pair it with Chromatic Fire. But the point is here, is that no time to explain. With that buff to its damage, being a Pulse Rifle and an Exotic Primary, should transfer to our Portal Buddy and its damage. And if you can pair that with Child of the Old Gods, fellas, find a way to constantly be casting your Rifts, and I think there'll be a ton of content in the game you'll be able to solo. Now, moving on, considering this is Void 3.0, we have to talk about Nezirak Sin. Ah, yes. Old Nezirak, essentially, guys, any Void damage kill will increase ability energy recharge rate and that's all your abilities your super your neutral game abilities every bit of it has a faster recharge rate just by getting void damage kills what's beautiful about this is that this is not tied to just your void abilities this also works with void based weapons 
and three of them right here are going to be disgusting next season. One of them being Graviton Lance. Now, Bungie's already brought up Graviton Lance and said it's going to be incredible. Again, that 54% multiplicatively being stacked on here for Pulse Rifles is going to elevate Graviton Lance and Black Hole to a whole nother level. And every single kill will cause those targets to detonate and spawn void projectiles, which means more and more explosions, all of which is getting buffed with next season Sandbox. I'm expecting Graviton Lance to be absolutely disgusting next season. It's already really good. Like, go clear out some ads right now and watch it do work. And it's going to get substantially better. That in combination with Nezarak Sin, your uptime for your abilities will be incredible. Now, another exotic that's getting an individual change is, of course, Ruinous Effigy. Now, Ruinous is another trace rifle, but it too is also getting a buff from that 40%. It's got a lot of good things going for it, including the fact that it can spawn those transmutation spheres upon kills, which, by the way, deal void damage. And you can pick up those spheres and do a number of things with it. You can do a light attack, a heavy attack. You can even do a guard drain, which kills targets. And the catalyst increases the damage against targets affected by transmutation spheres. But with the change coming to Ruinous next season, they actually increase the damage dealt by guarding with transmutation sphere by 66%, 30% against players, and transmutation sphere multi-kills will now count for orb generation. So again, we're stacking on more synergy here. Ruinous though, Nezrax Sin, Graviton Lance, all of these weapons are going to pair so well. And of course, you still got Lumenark, which we know Lumenark is going to be getting a nerf here eventually, but it's also supposed to be getting an exotic catalyst. So who knows how nasty it's going to be. Now, speaking of explosions, we have to bring up TQ's Divination. Another weapon that's also going to be benefiting from the big ginormous buff handed out to exotic primaries, TQ's Divination with Burning Steps is going to be a force to be reckoned with. I love TQ's. But with that 40% buff, if you tack that on with Path of Burning Steps, all of these solar final blows will give you bonus damage. Now, if you don't want to use TQ's, that's fine. You also have Sunshot. Now, Sunshot with Sunblast is just beautiful to watch, right? Like, as it's getting more kills with each explosion, it chains from target to target. So you can imagine the 40% buff here is just going to make Sunshot just an absolute monster. On top of the fact that it is a 150 round per minute hand cannon, so it shoots even faster. And of course, if y'all remember way back when it got the magazine buff, Sunshot is a fantastic weapon in PvE. Combine that with Path of Burning Steps, and you're going to be cooking a ton of hive. Next on the list, we've got Huckleberry. And, and that's it, man. Just Huckleberry. You can use it with whatever you want to use it. Huckleberry is the only weapon that still has pre-nerfed Rampage, meaning it actually caps out at 66% damage instead of 33% damage on our other Rampage weapons. So Huckleberry, in combination with the 40% buff handed out to exotic primaries and the fact that it can stack up to 66%. Oh, and it comes with a perk called Ride the Bull, which increases the fire rate when you hold down the trigger and the exotic catalyst gives you Bull Rider where kills automatically reload the entire magazine. Fellas, are you not seeing it? You could actually do a Huckleberry chromatic fire combination, right? Like, I don't want to get too carried away with chromatic fire because I'm like, yo, look at all the variety of builds. But then, like every build I've mentioned, I'm like, yo, use chromatic fire. But could you use Huckleberry with chromatic fire? Why, yes. Yes, you can. And it's going to be disgusting. Next up, we have to talk about Lucky Pants. Lucky Pants, substantially better than ever before. We've seen the damage testing we've done with it with exotic hand cannons as well as legendary hand cannons. Now, there was some deviation, right? We saw Seven Seraph Officer Revolt with Vorpal surpass many exotic hand cannons when stacking it with Lucky Pants in our DPS tests. But now that there's going to be a 40% buff, you're about to see some absolute nasty combinations with Lucky Pants. And probably the biggest one I'm going to be looking at is, of course, Malfeasance. Considering Malfeasance not only is a fast rate of fire hand cannon, which pairs the best there with Lucky Pants, but it also does that explosive damage when stacking on slugs. And of course, it does increased damage against Taken enemies, which I don't really know how much Taken we're going to be dealing with. Regardless, though, Malfeasance Lucky Pants, already a fantastic combination, and it's only going to get better. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about one of the new exotics coming out, and that is, of course, Osmiomancy. Now, these are some Warlock exotic gauntlets that actually will grant us two cold snap grenades. And as we stated last week, I'm excited to introduce you not only Stacy now, but also Sandra. Two stasis turrets from two different grenades. Perfect lockdown. We're talking being able to freeze an entire battlefield all by yourself. And if you pair it with exotics like Traveler's Chosen with Gift of the Traveler, this is going to grant you even more abilities back to back, thus allowing you to pretty much spam everything you want. Now, of course, you've got demolitionist weapons, but the main takeaway about Traveler's Chosen is, of course, that 40% damage buff is also being applied to that sidearm. Either way it goes, two stasis turrets, some bomber perks, ice flare bolts, and max discipline. Oh, it's going to be nasty. Now, next up, I want to talk about the Secant Filament Boots. Now, these boots actually will grant devour on empowering Rift Casts, as well as overload rounds for you and your allies. Now, there is a lot 
lot of things that are going to be synergizing well here. You can imagine a combination like Feed the Void and Child of the Old Gods, where you instantly heal to full health on an empowering Rift cast, as well as summoning this Void Soul, which seeks out targets, damages them, weakens them, and that Void Soul, with each enemy kill, will activate Devour yet again, continuously healing you as you are also being empowered. Now, to me, what's equally, if not even more potent on these exotics, is the fact that you can actually stun Overload Champions with any weapon. That's amazing. That changes so much. And not only for yourself, but also your allies will also be able to disrupt foes while standing in that empowering rift. Fellas, can you imagine stunning an overload champion with Galahorn? I'm just saying, pop these exotics on, throw on a Galahorn, and just don't even think. Just shoot and kill, man. There's a lot of weapons that are going to be good with this combination, though, especially with Child of the Old Gods running around, applying debuff. And if you're throwing grenades around with Echo of Undermining, boom, even more weakening occurring. Now, next up is really Verity's Brow, plus any void weapon, plus Chaos Accelerant, plus Feed the Void aspect. Now, there's a number of things going on here. First up, Feed the Void. When you defeat an enemy with a void ability, you automatically activate Devour. Chaos Accelerant allows you to hold your grenade button to overcharge Vortex, Axion Bolt, Scatter, and Magnetic Grenades. You also have Echo of Undermining, where void grenades weaken enemies. And there's another fragment that extends the duration of some of your grenades, most notably Vortex. If you combine this with Verity's Brow, which by the way, states that weapon final blows with a damage type matching your subclass energy grants death throws, which provides grenade damage bonus and grants grenade energy. This also applies to allies and their grenade regeneration when you have death throws. Imagine Verity's Brow in combination with a super buffed Graviton Lance. In combination with everything we just mentioned right here. Are you feeling it? And listen, if you don't want to rock Verity's Brow, then rock Controverse Hope. Essentially everything that we just mentioned right there. But with Controverse Hold, you gain some level of damage resist while overcharging your grenade. And those charged void grenades will return an amount of grenade energy on hit. I know Controverse Hold is getting some changes, if I'm remembering correctly, but I think it's still going to be a good choice to go with. But swapping up either one of those exotics should do pretty well. And then, of course, you've got Nothing Manacles, which is another grenade exotic, but this one is targeted at scatter grenades. But you get two charges of those. So everything that we just mentioned here, fragment-wise, aspect-wise, but now you're going to be overcharging scatter grenades with Nothing Manacles. Now, if you're a hunter right now and you're like, yo, man, where's my build? Listen, we haven't forgot about you. Void Hunters next season, I think are still going to be pretty good. With combinations like Omnioculus, Suppression Grenades, Stylus Executioner Aspect, Vanishing Step Aspect, Echo of Undermining Fragments. We're talking damage resist while going invisible. And on top of that, you're going to be able to go invisible with double snare bomb charges. And these snare bombs also weaken. So you go invisible on dodge, grenades will weaken and suppress, and kills on those weaken or suppress enemies will grant invisibility, which gives you a ton of benefits. Now the question comes up, what's the best weapons to pair here? Do we take a Monte Carlo approach to give us a ton of smoke bombs? Do we take a Rat King approach? just for more invis. I think the point is, is that Omnioculus, if you watch the most recent videos from Maddox, you see how potent this exotic is when used correctly, like throwing your smoke down and then throwing your grenade right afterwards. Whether it is a suppressor grenade or vortex grenade or whatever, there is a play style here that is kind of mesmerizing. And I don't like to be mesmerized by hunters, but uh, yeah, this is kind of sexy. No, you won't have heart of the pack next season, but you'll still have a number of benefits that Omnioculus will still grant you and it'll still synergize with high up time and your abilities, keeping your fire team alive, and it's only going to get better in Void 3.0. Now, since we're on the topic of Void Hunters, we got to bring up Mobius Quiver for just a second with Orpheus Rig. It was confirmed last week, and by the way, we did a video of clarifications for Void 3.0, where we went over everything that Bungie mentioned in that podcast, but Orpheus Rig will allow for a third volley to be fired from Mobius Quiver, which by the way, should substantially increase the damage. Exotics the pair here? Obviously, I'm looking at bad juju, guys. Again, String of Curses, getting that super back quick for my hunters man this could actually be the play and considering how fast you can get that super out i mean it's essentially just three bow shots and it has such a quick release now too right depending on how the damage stacks here though it could be significant enough to out dps many of our other supers now leaning into our titans we got to talk about the void titan with bastion this is going to be an aspect that i am so excited to see how it synergizes with things like offensive bulwark and that aspect sign ramparts you're going to have the ability to cast a barricade that provides constant overshield that you can shoot through and while you have this overshield your grenades are charging significantly faster so you can imagine just posting up behind the bastion aspect and sign ramparts shooting enemies pairing it with things like echo of undermining or even echo of expulsion where voidability kills cause enemies to explode the only downside is we're not rocking controlled demolition as we can only slot two aspects at once you imagine 
control demolition, bastion, and offensive bulwark all at the same time. Now, another exotic that would pair very nicely here with bastion and our void titans is, of course, Crest of Alpha Lupi, or in some parts of the universe, Alpha Lupi. Fellas, when you cast your barricade, you're going to be granted an overshield, but Alpha Lupi also gives you a health bump to you and your teammates that may be the difference in both PvE and in PvP. So you have like a double whammy here of healing effects. I know we're kind of like leaning away from weapons right now because it started off being all about the weapons and now we're kind of just focusing on aspects and exotic combinations. But these are builds that I think are going to be good all on their own despite whatever it is you're using. Crest could potentially be the thing that keeps your fire team alive. And it actually has a pretty large radius. I've used Crest in things like Trials. But that health bump just wasn't enough. But a health bump with Overshield? Now that's a different story. The only wild card in this aspect is of course Icefall Mana. I still don't really know how Icefall Mana is going to work here with Bastion. Will we get double the overshield? Bungie actually started giving us clarification and to me it almost sounded like no but we'll know for certain next week. So guys those are the builds and exotic combinations to look out for. Did we miss some things? Probably. And as we get into it next week we'll be diving into each one of them. For now though I just wanted to give you a taste of flavors so that you have a build ready and again Destiny 2 is going offline next Monday. So I would highly suggest considering Dim is normally down day one having everything set up on whatever character it is that is your main. Have a build ready whether it's a void related build or just one of these exotics that are getting substantially buffed going into this next sandbox so that you're not scrambling to grab things from your item managers i'm sure our servers are going to be pooping on us there's going to be a lot of chaos which is why i hope one of these builds caught your attention by the way if you're new here feel free to subscribe we cover everything destiny related we also stream over at twitch.tv slash astrocross so come check us out well fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right Thank <laughs> you.